For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lindy and I head up the breakfast briefing team here in Google. And this morning is our eighth breakfast briefing session of the year. And I'm sure you, like me, are wondering where has the year gone? Uh, our days are certainly getting shorter. Uh, there's definitely a chill in the air. Um, and it's with that, as retailers, the natural shift is to focus on what is going to be and what are the most important shopping events of the year. Our consumers are getting ever more demanding as technology is getting smarter. And it's never been more important as retailers to make sure that we are capturing those users when it matters most to them online. Our speaker this morning is an absolute expert in this field. Amy partners with some of our biggest retail clients in the retail sector um, in the UK across CPG and beauty. And over the next 40 minutes, Amy's going to be bringing you through some tips, best practices, tools and strategies that you can potentially help scale to your business to help you plan for peak this Christmas, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Before I introduce Amy onto the stage, um, the running order of this morning, our session is going to be slightly shorter, so we'll be giving you 15 minutes back to enjoy your breakfast. Amy will be giving her uh, presentation and there will be time given at the end for questions and answers. But if you would like to have any one-to-one -one, uh, Q&A with Amy afterwards, she will be outside the auditorium, so feel free to reach out to her then. Right, that's it from me. Um, I will ask you to help me give Amy a very warm welcome to the stage here this morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for the intro, Lindy. Welcome, everyone, and good morning. And again, thank you for coming in in what we know has been a very wet and wild morning, October 5th, that it is, here to talk about everything Christmas over the next 40 minutes and how we allow you to get prepped and ready for what is a very busy season um, that is right ahead of us. So how your businesses can be prepped to get ahead and to actually be visible in the key shopping periods. So, oops, flick on. Before we kick into the agenda that I'll present to you shortly, I just want to take a moment to reflect upon Google having its 20th birthday last week. Wish we could all say the same. But let's take a look back at the fact that we've now got 20 years of data across the board on our audiences, understanding what people are searching, what people are actually looking towards, and really now having an in-depth view of how the landscape is behaving based on this data. So it also illustrates to us that people have really been leaning into the likes of Google Search and YouTube over the past year, particularly asking how the how to do things. So this just frames the fact that we are, as people, really leaning to these platforms. And what I'm going to show you now is a very quick clip on all of the year's collated data um, showing the top trending questions. and friends of the victims know that we'll do everything we can. We are Vegas strong. No matter what we're going through, we still have to push forward. Are you ready to shake up the world? Yeah! It takes an act of love to realize we are all in this together. I'm asking that you guys join and mobilize with me. I will say it right now out loud. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. <laughs> The things that 
that make us different. Those are our superpowers. Go out there and conquer the world. Because the world would not be as beautiful as it is if we weren't in it. So we've now seen how people turn to Google search and to YouTube, but today we're going to talk about how people turn to search and to YouTube around Christmas and what the latest insights we have over the past year are here with that, of course, as well, how Google can help and assist you across the next few key months. So Christmas, though, as itself, is not the only key shopping period ahead of us. And I'm about to illustrate to you now what this crazy slide up here behind me means. It is not a set of ski slopes, I can guarantee you. But this is a series of peaks. And when I say peak, I mean any peak moment across the next couple of months where there's going to be uh, a big shopping surge on across the UK and Ireland for everything Christmas, Black Friday, you name it. So little do we know, we start off here by looking at Halloween, which is right around the corner, which is followed by straight after the Irish bank holiday. And what we've seen over the last couple of years in terms of data around bank holiday in particular is that footfall tends to hugely increase in store and actually, in fact, traffic online as well. So whether you're keeping top of mind on both of those angles or the overall holistic view, which is your acute omni-channel experience, it's absolutely key to make sure that you are visible during this key small peak. So then we move onwards towards what is the lead up to Black Friday and Cyber Week. And we all know that Black Friday is a bit of a buzzword over the last couple of years, and it's very Americanized. However, what we have seen across the UK and Ireland is that this is actually just tending to evolve and evolve year on year with us in terms of how the consumer is behaving. They want more from it every year. With UK advertisers that I'm currently working with, we're currently seeing things like a two week Black Friday coming up. So it is definitely not dead. It is absolutely on um, the rise annually. Um, what happens to, tends to happen then is that we move off and we start looking towards the key gifting period, which is end of November, start of December, where people are really in the mindset about what they want to choose to purchase, how they're going to purchase, and when. So being sure, again, that we are ahead of the curve, mindful and visible to those who have maybe bought from us before or who are yet to buy from us, that we hope they do, um, all the way up until the cutoff dates for shipping and delivery itself. So we'll show you that through a number of stats in a short while soon, but just be aware that there are a number and series of peaks ahead of us in terms of these key shopping events is what we allude to. And it doesn't just stop there at Christmas. We all know that Boxing Day in particular verticals is absolutely um, of key importance to make sure that we double down on the discounts and get them through before year end, and then January sales. So it goes on and on, but we do have to be aware that there are actually about seven key shopping events, not just the one Christmas that we all tend to sometimes think about. So what exactly are we going to cover today? So some busy season insights, the latest data that Google has across Christmas and what it means for the consumer in the past year, um, getting set up for these peaks. So how do we make sure we are ahead? And then moving into understanding your audience. So who do you know and how do you know half, how to go after these key people? And then, of course, maximizing all of the traffic that we just went through that will be right at our doorstep, but making sure that we're visible in those moments. So to kick off, a couple of insights, quite interesting, in fact, that we've pulled over the past year. We are seeing that, predicted this year, based on last um, Q4's data, which would have been October to December, the people are actually in a place to be able to spend a third more when it kicks off into this winter period. Third more of their salaries going on gifting, eating, drinking, whether that be pub crawls or the not just one, but four, maybe Christmas parties that we all tend to be having these days. But across um, the country, we are seen to be actually one of the biggest in terms of celebrating this compared to the rest of Europe. 
And with that, um, just to showcase how leaned in we are to the winter period in Ireland, we are actually now the first country outside the Christmas mad Nordics um, to start playing Christmas music on the radio. So that again is just a key insight to let us know that the population is essentially waiting for this time of year. And of course, they're in their ready phase now to be able to go off and spend a lot more than they would at any other given time of the year. And just to note on a side that we actually go absolutely huge on Christmas jumpers. So we are again noted one of the biggest across Europe. And that may be down to all the kind of social events that we get involved in. But um, anyone in the apparel or fashion industry would be quite attuned to that. But with that, the holiday season takes its toll, with 50, over 50% 50 of us last year actually describing it as frantic and 61% describing it as a stressful time. So what does this mean here and what am I trying to tell you? This means that we really need to double down on making sure that the shopping experience is very much connected, that it is very much simplified and convenient for the user. One, for them to actually become loyal to us and two, for them to become a returning user, which is where we find our most valuable customers at times. So keeping aware and being mindful of these stats um, is just another way to signify how we need to deliver our retail experiences out to the consumer. And with that, um, we have seen and we will see that one in five adults will shop online on Christmas Day itself, imagine, um, this year based on last year's data. So they will spend a predicted 500 million on the day itself across Ireland. So it's even higher again within the UK and Ireland, as you could imagine. So being attuned to that, the keeping the lights on over the actual Christmas days and Christmas Eve is as important as the run of advertising that you may do all the way up to these key, key periods. But with that, and of course we are aware these days that the consumer is also expecting an awful lot more. So in particular areas within transport, we see Uber. Within entertainment, we see Netflix. Within the hotel industry, we're seeing Airbnb. All as really great examples of keeping up with how the tech environment is evolving with the consumer. And keeping up with that pace of change is of absolute importance to succeed. And these are the brands we're seeing constantly um, out in the market that tend to win. So being attuned to how they're doing that and trying to adapt your way of doing business in line with this, with the connected consumer who is now expecting almost same day delivery, which I still can't really get my head around. But we all know that um, we're expecting a lot more these days. So whether that's um, creating a more seamless um, experience on site, personalizing it, tailoring it, or creating a drop off in terms of picking up um, items in store is the way we've been moving and what we need to keep up with. So like I mentioned, same day shipping, personalizing your product like Nike Air, being able to create your own runners, um, being able to find what you want when you want it is how we need to look towards to create a really successful retail experience. And so the latest Forrester report tells us that actually to be successful these days within retail as of the latest data in 2018, we need to be able to have our customers absolutely obsess about our product or service. If they're not obsessing about it, then they're possibly not telling others about it. And we all know that word of mouth is absolutely crucial. And we all know that an obsessive customer experience will allow for these people to come back to us which again can be a really valuable user in terms of the revenue that they'll bring to your business. And of course, we all know Amazon, the giant in the room. So we all know that this is again another great example of how they're leading in providing the consumer with what they want, when they want it, and multiple of. So not just the one thing you've gone on there for, you probably come offline having bought five different things in five different categories. So being flexible, being there, and being able to provide that level of um, intuition to your customer on site will be a huge part of the process. And I'm gonna bring you through some tools later on on how you can make amendments uh, to actually get yourself in that kind of best optimal space in terms of sites. 
but how can we help at Google? So we do understand your customer's intent based on their search behavior, based on what they've been querying and looking for. So with these powerful intent signals at scale across our seven products, we currently see a billion active users over each. So you can imagine the plethora of information that is going across that every second of the day. So we're here to help you, to allow you to be ahead, be visible, and be top of mind, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's using maps to allow people to find your business through directions. A simple down to the phone call that is linked to your Google My Business site. It is absolutely crucial that we are teed up and in line to be able to benefit from the amount of powerful signals that we have to offer you. So a tool that I will firstly introduce here is thinkwithgoogle.com. So what this is, is that this will allow you to freely get the latest data, insights, and inspiration um, relative to your business industry and the type that you're working within um, right into your inbox from Google. So subscribing is very easy, takes a couple of minutes, and you can allow yourself to retrieve these um, every month um, month on month to be able to take that inspiration and put it into practice. Um, so overall, what does it mean to win? We've mentioned being visible, being top of mind, and being ahead. And let's take a look at now a couple of strategies and a couple of ways that we can actually suggest for you to really take force with that. So number one, building an engaged audience. So audience is everything. Audience are our shoppers and those who are our customers. They mean everything to us, where a business is nothing without its customers. So we know that 79% of shoppers start the actual gifting path to purchase um, with no particular set of planned retailers. So how they've been thinking based on the insights we've been able to gather over the past year is that they've been looking at what they actually want to get rather than a loyal brand name or a particular retailer at hand. So this is quite important to note that in these key early periods, being October now, um, and the offset where we can get ahead, we need to remember that people aren't particularly loyal. We have an opportunity to be able to put ourselves forward, put ourselves at the eye of the customer, and make sure that we and you are the chosen ones for that sale. So interesting as well, this particular stat shows us that 82% of people have actually half of their gifts decided before the start of December. So again, everything is important that we run in December in terms of um, how we actually advertise, but people have basically made decisions on half the gifts they're going to choose before the start of December kicks off. So being cognizant of that is quite important as well in terms of getting out there early. But how do we define audiences at Google? So we take a look at people's browsing habits, what they're actually looking for, um, how they're searching for it. And we take a look at as well, of course, maps data, YouTube data across those seven products that I just alluded to. Um, and the audience opportunity for you with Google would be to simply first look at this simple framework ahead of us here and take a look at the people that you do already know and bucket them out separate to those who you don't know, but who you, of course, want to get to know. So by looking at those who you do know, whether that be within your CRM data or whether that be through engagement in social media channels, etc., you need to really double down on those and make sure that you understand the value of them as you go offset to look to those who you don't know yet. So you want to, of course, make them as valuable as possible. So utilizing different uh, targeting methods within Google, some of which are new and I'll walk you through now, but those that you will probably be already aware of, like demographic targeting, taking a look at location targeting, choosing particular locations that you're going to target out as a radius to, to make sure you capture them, whether that's far out or actually closest to your store. Affinity targeting is something that you can also utilize in your AdWords ac account quite simply. So these are buckets of people that we have clustered together um, that are maybe travel fanatics or food lovers, things like that. So intent qualified audiences sit within those and it is a really good idea for you to go forth and utilize them to be able to gain, make those gains on those sales. 
An in-market is something new that we brought to Google over the last year. So this is um, essentially a segment of audiences that we have absolutely qualified, given that they would have searched for, example, hotel in the last 30 days, or particular actual keywords that suggest hotel in Cork, for example. So that will allow us to understand that these people are actively looking, the intent is there for them to make those purchases, and we have segmented them to allow us to um, choose them as an audience listing to go after. And similar audiences as well, another advanced audience type that we have where we use our own current customers and we allow similar audiences, Google's feature, to build out and look for people that look like the people we already have. So you could almost think about them as lookalike audiences to who we already have in our systems. But we also need to reach them where they watch, of course, on YouTube. So you'll see here over last year in October to December, we saw across the UK and Ireland here, over 300 million searches and views across Christmas decor. And again, these just signify the fact that people are really leaned into this period. It's probably the period of the year that people are completely more so won over by, um, where we're seeing as well within the cooking and baking space for food, anyone in the food industry, understanding that this is, again, high prime time, where over 3 billion uh, views are counted across the three key months of the year. So just being aware of these type of insights to understand how people, again, are behaving. But through that content, we need you to do it the right way in terms of a busy period. So we all know that we're all busy. We've lots of work on the table. We've a lot of social events to go to from now till the end of January, perhaps. Um, but we need you to be able to build your content in a way that brings it down to a very, snappy, bite-sized piece for your customer to actually consume the lot. So six seconds is what we would generally advise here so that your product or service is out there and is actually captured in its full breadth and offering is understood by your customer. So narrowing down your content and using the likes of TrueView across YouTube or bumper ads to get those um, small pieces of information out, again, to build awareness and to be top of mind for your customers. And staying top of mind as they continue to browse through the months that are ahead of us. So making sure that you're tailoring your messaging as the months go on and being on top of that. Tailoring your messages allows you, again, to keep the business top of mind on what you currently have in stock, what has changed, if pricing has changed due to what you're seeing the competitors out there do. Make sure you do tailor it so that also the consumer knows that they're actually being kept in mind when it comes to what you're doing with your advertising. And second, capture the demand early. So again, making sure that you have all your local searches included here. So for example, near me, your store hours, sounds very simple, but actually it's a hugely beneficial piece in terms of local and how that can benefit you. Um, store hours and even the address, down to the address of where they can find you, linking yourself through Google Maps to be able to be accessible. Um, and we're seeing a huge rise in near me searches. So again, that's prevalent to the fact that people are really looking to get what they want at a really quick pace in time. So another tool that I'm going to walk you through now to be able to, to have you build on those insights relative to your very own industry or the work that you are working within yourselves is googletrends.com. And believe it or not, I actually use this tool myself in my own role. Um, extremely useful in understanding any product or word um, in terms of how it's rising and the demand for it. So you will be able to see a view of actually what is this telling us? Is it telling us that there is high demand for my product um, hotel? I keep talking about hotels. Um, so our food or restaurant or any particular niche, Fitbit let's say, that's one particular product. We can find out is there a huge demand for that or is there particular demand in any spiking weeks across the period itself? So using Google Trends simply at googletrends.com is a really unique and easy way of doing that and it's in real time so you're able to do this if not every day but every week and take a snapshot view of what that product or service is looking like at any given time. 
And three, so the next stage, the third and final stage here in getting prepped would be to look at your inventory. So clearing inventory can be a huge piece of work, of course, as we all know. Um, we all know, though, that there is need to shift particular stock at any given time, whether that be from earlier in the year or if we've had maybe perhaps a difficult trading period due to bad weather spells, which we all know have happened earlier in the year. Um, and it's a really good way to be able to actually understand now what is of priority to us in terms of moving and selling? Where can we actually make top margins? Can we do that with X stock or Y stock? When will it be better to move it? And thinking about that now and creating a framework is actually going to be hugely beneficial simply down to the fact that people are out there shopping. So what you'll see is that from our latest data, we see that just before Cyber Week, so you're looking at mid-November here, and all the way into Cyber Week, which is Black Friday and Cyber Monday, um, we see that people are actually still shopping. So 94, 91% of us are still out there shopping all the way through, because of course the discounts continue, the offers continue, and we want to be able to make all the gains we can as a consumer on those. So with this in mind, think about your inventory on how you can move it and at the right times based on the demand for shopping as the weeks go along. Early December, this is still at 87% of people looking for what they want and still out there shopping. And naturally, it's starting to tail off then mid-December off into the shipping cutoff point, which we now has, know has evolved to the 21st of December for deliveries. Um, so just being mindful of where people are and their abilities to shop in terms of the inventory that you have. So what we've had a look at here is the overall retail searches in November and December last year. And we can see over the past couple of years from 2013 onwards that these have been on the rise from the dark blue line shadowing here. So people are constantly, continuously, and upwardly uh, questioning um, different terms around Christmas, different products, different shopping-related searches. So it just gives us that added confidence that actually this is growing year on year over the past couple of years. But in the past year, few years, Christmas, of course, growing, we're seeing parts of the rest of the year actually flatten out. So again, this just alludes to the fact that Christmas is what it's all about. The November, December peak here has been consistently rising, as you'll see. And this indicates to us a really key concentrated period of demand. So again, all the more for us to go after and all the more for us to shift our attention to the now from here right till the end of December. And of course, last minute gift shopping is growing. So confidence is growing, of course, in delivery that I mentioned uh, just a little bit earlier. Um, we're all now tending to rely on these delivery dates more and more as the months go on and how this tech evolves. So with last minute shopping growing, we need to again be aware that keeping the lights on towards the end is absolutely important, even as we all go off ourselves to enjoy and relax during the Christmas period, we need to ensure that what we have out there about our brand to continue to build it and to continue to remain top of mind is absolutely key for us to continue to make those added revenues, um, which will all be important at the end of the year. And with that, it's important to make your store a competitive asset. So enhancing digital is absolutely important, of course, and wrapping both of those together with your omni-channel experience, which is your store and digital-led strategy. But making sure your store is a competitive asset as well is key. So for those last-minute gift shoppers, a lot of them, as we know, will be running around the high street looking for anything and everything that they can. So making sure that we are you know, looking to towards, again, getting our site set up locally, um, maps, addresses, data like that. But actually, with more involvement from Google, we see that people bidding higher towards users who are living and located five or less miles from their store is where we see huge gains. So we're seeing that actually people who are closer, we will bid up on them within our ad space to be able to capture them and make sure we push them over the line into a sale. Um, 
And with that, a new, a lovely feature that Google has embraced in the last year is local inventory ads. It's quite interesting to see that um, you'll be able to now have a look, where can I get a particular branded bag? Is it in stock? The site will actually be able to show you whether it's in stock or whether it's not. So being able to see how many of them are there and how many are not. So I've recently seen an example of it with Harvey Norman in Dublin, where they're actually able to tell you, OK, if you're going to drive all the way out here to Tala to pick this up, is it going to be there? And the site has told me, yes, four left. And I've been able to go out there not wasting time, not wasting any of my energy where I don't have it. So it's absolutely crucial um, to be set up for success as a store as well on the competitive front. And the opportunity to influence here with Google so, um, taking a look at these numbers here, mobile influenced purchases are driving on average 13% higher sales and 18% higher spend. So, where you have these local initiatives set up digitally to align with your store, making it all that more competitive as an offering, then we're definitely and generally seeing across the board huge surges in the actual amount of sales and the amount people are generally end up spending. So to summarize all of that, the three key areas and strategies that we can take away all lead to, again, being visible, being top of mind, and being ahead. And if there is any slide that you remember it this morning, later on this evening, when you're out enjoying your Friday um, afternoon and night, just remember this, encapsulating all of what I've just mentioned here in terms of the how and how you can get yourself prepped and ready for that by these key three features. So before I move into another few areas on the tech side that can line you up for success across the few months, um, we have seen that 87% of us um, are now turning to search in our moment of need. So this is generally the first place we'll go to. And I know it myself, if I'm somewhere running around, going to the car, and I'm trying to understand something while I'm going shopping, of course, we're going to look at our mobile phone. It's become the assistive shopping right hand, as we know, and we're going to be constantly checking, actually, can I get this somewhere else cheaper? Can I get it nearer to me? So making sure that you are there on the tech side as well, um, with these three areas is how we're going to be able to allow you to add to those strategies we've walked through um, and make that overall advantage um, quite succinct. So showing up, showing up at the right time, being visible like we mentioned in the ways we can is important, but doing it at the right times is actually even more important. So we all know that when we're generally wanting to know about something, we'll take a look at that first. A few hours later, we'll be trying to find it. A few hours on from that, or maybe the next day, we'll be looking to buy it and seeing, okay, what's the price point? Where can I pick it up? And then Sometimes, depending on product, we will want to actually watch and see how could I use it best effectively? How could I actually get the most out of this? So we turn to different channels such as YouTube for that. And with 60% of us actually looking up our products before we buy them, especially large ticket items, the online piece is of growing importance here. So that's really where you'll probably capture your consumer and ch like churn their mind on how they're actually going to decide and decipher between one or the other, you or somebody else. So being there online before they actually are in your stores and purchasing and what you can offer there, whether again it's a tailored or personalized experience is absolutely crucial. And wising up, so the data that you have around you is absolutely critical for use. And a lot of us do overlook it. A lot of us put it to the back of the mind. We think, OK, it's too complex, et cetera. Let's not really delve into the depths of what we could be doing with our data. But it is there for you to make your product more intuitive. And it is there for you to provide that bit more of a useful experience. So we do tend to see that those with tailored, personalized site experiences really do have a higher uh, rebound rate in sense of people coming 
going back um, and back and back again to purchase, where the login is very easy, there is no real complexity around making the sale, all the features are saved within. So simple things like that that we sometimes overlook on our day-to-day -day work um, is absolutely critical. So again, whether it's CRM data and advancing that and splitting it out into different valued segments on who we deem is the most valuable user, is it due to the session time on site? Do we value people because they spend more time on our site? Or do we value them because of the amount they're spending? Is it once off or are they actually a continual frequent buyer? So you really should be segmenting those areas out to get the most out of what we have coming in in terms of transactions to our business every day. And speeding up. So you'll notice that this is loading quite slowly, intentionally. Um, and what does that mean? So over half of us actually completely abandon a site if it doesn't load within three seconds. And we all know that. It doesn't take a minute for us to take out a phone, look for something that we really need, and it doesn't load X off, and we're off onto the search um, page again to have a look at the next um, particular offering that is there. So generally, with half of us abandoning the site because of the user experience not being great, it also quite lacks confidence in how we think about the next page on site. Is it really going to bring us what we want? Probably in our minds, no, but the drop-off effect becomes higher and higher when that tends to happen. So. Page speed means money, and we all know that, plain and simple, simply due to these drop-off rates. So a study from Mobile Marketer recently worked out that the average impact of a one-second delay, imagine just one second, is causing a reduction of 7% of sales generally for any advertiser. So that's a huge amount of revenue if you add that up at the end of any given year in the sense of what we're losing out to just due to what we could make, a few simple tech fixes. So I want you to take a look now for the next minute or so um, to a quick video that really outlines what it means inside the customer's mind to have a bad online um, site experience in terms of purchase, in terms of actual login, in terms of how they're actually going to get it delivered. Um, and this is a real life scenario of what's happening in terms of making that move on site. Hey, just that, thanks. You sure? Uh, yeah. Username? Oh, uh, Nick M? No. Nope. NM1983? No. I, uh, Zandy Pops? Sorry. <clears throat> Zandy Pops? No, okay. Don't worry, I'll help. What's your postcode? Oh, it's uh, GU749ZT. Welcome back, Nick, forever. Oh, okay. Please listen carefully to this bread license agreement before continuing with your purchase of a loaf of bread. If you do not, blah, blah, blah. You also agree not to use any bread-based products for any purposes prohibited by United Kingdom law, including without limitation the design, development, and manufacture of missiles, chemical, nuclear, or biological weapons. Tick. I'm afraid you've timed out. What? Sorry. Hello? Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Hey. Just one loaf, sir. Yeah, we just... What's your username? It's Nick Forever, but number four, not the... Gotcha. Yeah. OK, I'm just going to check that you're a real person. Could you say that for me? That's not even a word. OK, how about this one? You know what, forget it. it, it or really... this one? Uh, Hippopotamice. You're in. Great, I'm in. £8.85. It's supposed to be 98 pence. Plus express delivery. What's that? Oh, well, it's express delivery. It's fast. So there's, um... Standard. Oh, standard. Standard delivery. That's four pounds ninety nine. Why? Bread insurance. You didn't untick the don't decline bread insurance option. You know what? I think I'll risk it. It is quite close to the sell by date. Don't care. Ninety eight pence it is. If you want to pop back in five business days, it'll be ready for your collection. Well, well, well I need it now, obviously. Oh, okay. Uh, you want the take home today price? Well, that's three pound twenty seven. You know what? I'm going to go. Come back soon. I won't. <laughs> So we can see here that, of course, the shopping online experience is meant to be easy. And in this instance, this is not what we want to achieve. So just taking some time to actually reflect on your site's current speed, what it actually means in terms of the journey, how many clicks does it actually take the user to end up knowing that it's on its way um, in the most 
lucrative, simple and convenient way possible is huge. And again, think about that 7% of sales lost if the site is not loading at the very offset after three seconds. So with that, our third tool to introduce to you is test your mobile site speed. So test my site with Google is again a free tool that will allow you to be able to um, really just make some quick, simple fixes. What it does as well for free is allow you to receive a report back after 24 hours only, um, showing you the amendments that you can make quickly and over the long term as well. We do know that these won't be made overnight, of course, but again, making sure that that shopping journey is as easy as possible can start here with something in the tech back end and um, getting you ready for the Christmas peak ahead. So again, just alluding to the omni-channel experience, it's absolutely crucial if you're looking to really get that holistic overview um, of what your business means for customers with online and in-store, it's crucial for that and using your data. Um, and Jeff Bezos says from Amazon, you don't get where it needs to be without a lot of pain. So making sure that your site speed is at one second, which of course seems quite um, crazy, but we can achieve, it's possible. So the average load time right now across Ireland is actually 10 seconds, far too long, which you can imagine after what we've just seen. And the optimal, extreme optimal would be just under one second. So looking and having a look up uh, towards Google's AMP, Accelerated Mobile um, Site Speed, afterwards is also an interesting article to take a look at where these things are advancing to. And an example of how Very have used it to make sure that Nikki knows she's on site, they care, and that they're telling her even what the weather is like outside. So all these small ways of making the consumer feel loved is what it's all about. So make sure that you are showing up, wise up with your data, and of course speed up with what you can do with your site is all very much in tune to the three earlier strategies about being visible, being top of mind, and being ahead are all intertwined to make sure that you have a successful Christmas period ahead. And to wrap up here, I just want to take a view to today's top queries in Ireland. So over the past seven days, these are the top search terms, in fact, of what people have been looking for. So it's quite clear and ev evident that these terms reflect a very buoyant economy, where it's clear that we are now coming back into a healthy economic space where disposable income generally tends to be rising. Um, we're seeing things like lotto and mortgage, quite... Um, <laughs> conflicting of each other there, uh, but things like mortgages, engagement rings, travel insurance, it's clear that people are really in a place to be able to spend across these areas um, within the industry. So Google in, uh, googletrends.com will help you get a view to these as well across the weeks and months. And I hope that you've all enjoyed these different tips and suggestions on how to get ready for the peak ahead. I'm happy to take any questions in here now or afterwards as well to have a chat outside. Thank you. <laughs>